Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. Reddit, what's your most devious plan for revenge? Put their phone number in a fake pizza ad, and post flyers all over a college campus. Say something like 2XL pizzas for $10 and 24HR delivery service give them two weeks before they have to change their number. Plan number one, get some Rain X, clean the back window of their car, and use the Rain X on your finger or small cloth to write or draw something. Then, whenever the outside of the window fogs, morning dew, or frosts up, the writing will be visible. For years, since even a good scrubbing and 52 car washes doesn't seem to remove whatever difference the Rain X makes. Attention overly attached girlfriends, great way to remind him you love him, too. Plan number two, get some timed release fertilizer and use it on their front lawn to write or draw, something. Sure you could use bleach or something to kill the grass to write what you want, but the fertilizer effect will last for weeks if not months. For enemies with pools. Every night go to his slash her house and drop a balled up candy bar in the shape of a pleasant POO in the bottom of the pool. They will at first approach it with precaution, but upon learning the game will begin to simply pick the suspicious candy out by hand. After a while, shit in the pool. 60% of the time, it works every time. I had a neighbor would was always acting like he owned the block. One day after he decided to call the cops on my friends for skating in my driveway, I decided that enough was enough. That night, I covered his entire lawn in powdered milk. The next morning, I came out to see him trying to uprake the cottage cheese he'd just made. It's been my go-to retaliation ever since. A friend of mine, a science major of some sort at Boston College, took his revenge by stealing a supply of roach pheromones from the lab and spraying it around the apartment of his nemesis. Apparently, every male roach in a 50-mile radius showed up for the party. I once got back at my neighbor for teeping my place. He doesn't lock his house, so for two years I pooped in his toilet and never flushed. When I finally confessed he was so relieved. Thought he had been sleep pooping and was seriously considering seeing a doctor. His response, I always flush. He waited two years for me to retaliate, not realizing that I was retaliating the whole time. Edit. I would also do things to alter my deposits, like eating a shitload of corn or peanuts before, just so he would look at it the next day like, I don't remember eating corn. <coughs> sponges. Get several sponges L, the fluffier the better. When I say several I mean. Stock up on those bitches. Get the sponges wet and use some string to tie them up into small sponge balls. When they dry you should be able to take the string off and they stay in that position. When leaving for the last time. Flush those bitches down the toilet. Sweet sweet revenge. Good for office buildings too, smiley face. Back in boarding school, a lot of men and women went to boarding schools in our country. It was like a live-in high school. I had a roommate that thought it was hilarious to flip my dresser upside down. So when I wake up in the morning and pull out one of the drawers to get dressed my clothes would fall on the ground. Not the funniest thing ever, but it was enough to get a laugh out of me. Either way. The kid wore out the novelty of the joke. This started getting old. It was annoying. What I did to combat it was clever. Since this is Soviet era furniture, and the designers had no imagination, it was a metal rectangle shaped dresser with wheels on the bottom, the only way to tell if it was upside down was if the wheel end was up. I took the wheels off the bottom and screwed them in on the top. When my roommate came back he immediately noticed his dresser with the wheel side up. He said I'm too clever to fall for this my name. So he flipped it over. The next morning as we're getting dressed for our first class, he pulls open a drawer and all of his clothes fall on the floor. TLDR, practical joke. The carpet cherry bomb. Had a friend that dealt with an evil landlord. 
there were many situations that warranted retaliation but they were powerless until it was time to move out. They sprinkled cherry Kool-Aid on the light tan carpets. It starts almost white in color and is a non-visible powder on the floor. They move out, the landlord goes to shampoo the carpets. Once the water hits the floor it stains bright Kool-Aid red as the cleaner sweeps across the floor. Pure evil retaliation that should only be used in extreme cases. The carpet cherry bomb. I've got a number of them. My problem is that the prank wars I get into are little things, nothing warranting these levels of response. The least aggressive of them would be to unscrew their shoriat and fit a bouillon cube into the head, then reseal it. Let them stew in those juices, eh. But let's take it up a notch. Let's say they really pissed me off. Say I have access to their underwear, and their bed. I get some dehydrated milk powder, and I sprinkle it into their sheets, and into their tidy whiteies. And they sleep in this milk bed, and wear those underwear, and as they sleep, they sweat. And as they sweat, their skin absorbs the milk. And then it begins to sour. And it's deep in their pores, so scrub as they will, they cannot get the stank out for some time. Say that wasn't all I wanted to do with them, and I get access to their computer. Well, have you ever heard of GNAA last measure? Basically the atom bomb of shock sites. Well, say I use an old version of portable Firefox, and set it to auto open that copy of Firefox. And say that it's set to auto load last measure. And say I go into their registry and change their system shell from explorer.exe to c colon backslash last measure backslash firefox.exe bam. They log in. Cascading shock site windows, and loud declarations from the speakers that the user is viewing homosexual pornography. You really wanna be a dick? Disable task manager too. So, maybe you want a third layer of hell, or maybe you want to come back later. So, you make a folder, or several, on their desktop with something truly embarrassing for a name. Like horse porn. And say you hide the taskbar and take a screenshot. You could then delete the folder, and set the background as wallpaper. You could even use a group policy registry entry to lock the wallpaper as permanent. And now, they have a prominent folder on their desktop that says horse porn which they cannot open or delete, or manipulate in any way. How's that? Is that good enough? <coughs> Related story. In high school, some girls who were in our youth group really ticked us off. They would constantly try to prank us by saying stupid stuff in window paint on our cars. So a group of us guys got really fed up one time, they made it so we could almost not even see out of our windows, and we knew we had had enough. We went to the store, bought duct tape, four cans of Axe, and as much glitter as we could carry. Seriously, this was a ton of glitter. We drove by their house, sisters, and as expected, they left their door unlocked. Success. Step 1 was glittering the seats. Done. Glitter was everywhere. Step 2, glitter in the air vents. Done. Glitter would continue to be everywhere. Step 3, duct tape the axe cans on full blast, throw them into the car like live grenades, and get out of there. Oh, and we wrote one word on the car in window paint. Stop. My friend egged and peanut buttered my car. Long story. Anyway, to get back at him, I found out that his car was parked at a bowling alley. My bud and I went over to exact revenge. First we had packing peanuts, which we filled his car up with to about stomach level if you were sitting down. We also took mustard and spread it all over his ventilation intake. We were going to leave his gas tank open and spill some sugar on the ground to make it look like we poured it in his tank, but I think we decided against it. We put fluff under his door handles. By far the best part though was that we took a bunch of flour and dumped it into his defroster vents, the ones that are right at the bottom of the windshield, and then used the manual controls, it was a Jeep Cherokee, 
and turned on the defrost setting with the maximum fan speed. We decided we had to witness his reaction, and there happened to be a higher level parking lot with a ledge overlooking. We stood and waited for the victims to exit the bowling alley. Once he got to his car. The amount of cussing while he felt the fluff and noticed all the packing peanuts was hilarious enough. Then after he shoveled enough of them out to sit in the driver's seat, he jumped into the car and turned the ignition only to be greeted by a cloud of flour. He went back inside and punched my informant in the face. Fun times. Get a whole bunch of those tiny little styrofoam packing balls, the real tiny ones. Gain access to the victim's car. Funnel as many as you can into all of the aircon vents. Set everything to max so when he turns the car on, instant snow globe. Hide bits of raw shrimp throughout their house slash apartment slash room slash car. Shrimp will start to rot in a couple days, and few things smell worse than rotten shrimp. If you make the pieces small, and hide them well, they might never actually find them all. Then it'll only stop smelling once the shrimp has decomposed completely, which can take a while. Get into their room late at night, place a dozen lawn gnomes around their room all staring directly at them and then place a speaker by their head. Play a pre-recorded mp3 of soft whispers. Tape their reaction and put it on Facebook. Extra points for coating the lawn gnomes in blood. My old co-worker used to tape the bottom of my mouse a lot and crack himself up laughing. So one day, I fill the cap of his hand sanitizer with black ink. Just minutes after he returns from lunch I hear him screaming with laughter as he runs past my workstation with black ink to his elbows. That made work so great for the next month. I once had a college roommate that wouldn't stop eating my food. I asked him countless times, he continued. The last straw was him eating all the Thanksgiving leftovers I brought back from home. To get back at him I mixed a ton of laxatives into all these beverages I bought and this cake I baked. Took him about a week and several doctor's visits to figure out what was happening. I had my sandwiches stolen all high school long. It wasn't a bully thing, I was big and athletic, it was friends of mine being douches because their moms couldn't make sandwiches worth a jank. I ignored it for four years. At first I told myself it was minor. One bite here or there, who cares? It'll tear around the edges and say fuck you Farva. But after a while it got annoying. And when I started lifting and wanting to count my calories it became downright rumpus worthy. But I said no, RT, no, your time will come. Flash forward, New Orleans, Mayish 2005, pre-Katrina. I'm there for my god brother's graduation at Tulane. We have days to wander the quarters. Bombing around on the trolley I happen upon the French market, an outdoors Nolan spice fest. Eventually I happen upon the hot sauce store. Know the store that sells sauce, some hot, the hot sauce store. Bottles are arranged in descending order from biggest to smallest, and cheapest to priciest. You know which corner I'm going for already. I find it at the far end of the rack, $12 for a wicked looking the size of a hotel shampoo. I buy it. I wait. Last day of school. Last class. Everyone chilling, nobody paying good old RT any attention. I bring out the goods, an Italian hoagie with lettuce and tomato, fresh from home. I slather it with the sauce, place the hoagie in a ziploc, in a plastic Publos bag, and noisily leave it on my desk as I leave for the bathroom. Adrenaline rush, I know who's in there. My friend from 9th grade, the only other white kid on our basketball team, will surely ring lead this. He is far and away the douchiest douche in school. How we stayed friends so long is nothing less than kooky bro quantum entanglement. I hate him. 10 sweaty minutes pass and I decide to re-enter. Result, I am greeted by seven teary-eyed, coughing, spitting, cursing, red-faced red-handed motherfuckers, girls included, who are alternating between hacking up and giving me the finger. 
they bull rush past me for the water fountains. The class is senior, high school, psychology honors. The teacher is from Louisiana and doesn't even particularly like me. He is dying lagging. I walk out the door, having reached absolute zero Kelvin of fucks given. TL, DR epic blister tongue. I signed my friend up for a bunch of gay dating sites a few years back. The profile cub looking for a bear got a lot of responses. He is also still a member of a gay and lesbian film society. He can't figure out why he keeps getting this stuff. I keep renewing the memberships. Six years and counting. Not just a plan. I did this. Buy some 7 to 11 style shitty porn magazines. Also buy some cigarettes and a black grease pencil. And the porn mags must be shitty, horrible stuff. Not penthouse not hustler, but the weird shit that they sell discount at 3 for $10 in shrink wrap, possibly from the UK. On the front of each magazine, write thinking of you in grease pencil. Meticulously go through every single page and, using the cigarettes, burn out the eyes, mouths and cooters of every woman in the magazine. Every single one, even the ones in the shitty ads for 900 numbers. This will take you about 15 cigarettes for a 36-page magazine. Write misspelled pejoratives on random pages. Slut, whore, fuku, etc. Mail one of them to your target. No return address. A month later, mail them another. Rinse, repeat, until they decide to move. I have done this to two very bad neighbors. The longest one lasted four months, and broke his apartment lease to GTFO. Dude I know, parked in my only visitor parking spot in a small apartment, but he didn't ask and just used it to park while he went to a bar with a girl. Anyways we were having people over and it made it a hassle to get parking. So me and my roommate take a condom put a little bit of cornstarch and mixed in a few drops of milk to give it a good thick white consistency. We slapped that condom on his windshield and it kind of leaked down his windshield, mind you the parking space is in the dark back alley downtown. Our apartment window looked right down onto the parking spot we waited until later that night when he came back. He got in the car, then immediately jumped out with a disgusted look on his face grabbed a branch from a bush and flicked the condom away, got in the car with his girl and drove off. Two weeks later I bumped into him and told him I saw his car at my place a few weekends ago. He said yeah I parked there and I came back and some sick homeless left a used condom on my windshield. I had to find a 24 hour car wash at 3 am. I just left. It wasn't me, but a friend had some trouble with a fired co-worker sending him email daily complaining that she got fired. He was second in command at the office. He signed up her email to every website he could find including some porn and other questionable marketing sites. The emails magically stopped in about a day. Had a friend that did this in college. It's called the Todd. Todd stands for trash can of death. Acquire a city trash bin. Like, the huge plastic green ones with wheels. Keep in your backyard the hotter outside and more directly in sunlight the better. Anything nasty you have anything at all put it in the Todd. Got a shit? Shit in the Todd. Got a piss? Piss in the Todd. Sour milk? Todd. Come. Todd. Rotten eggs? Todd that shit. Once the Todd is about half full, fill it another fourth of the way with water. Grab a big stick, stir that shit up. Caution, you will vomit. Let's sit. Take to house a person you hate. Lean the Todd up against the door. Ring the doorbell. Run like hell. Victim opens door. Todd falls in the house. Todd spills everywhere, unleashing its fury into the home of your enemy. Victim has to evacuate and have house fumigated for weeks. My chem teacher pulled this one in college. He had a roommate he hated who like clockwork, would come home from classes every day and immediately shut himself in the bathroom to take a dump. 
he was usually in there for half an hour or more and would stink up everything. So, my teacher found himself in possession of some leftover sulfuric acid from his chemistry class, took it home, and poured it in the toilet. Sulfuric acid is clear, so you'd never know it was in the toilet bowl just by looking at it. The kicker here is that when combined with sugar, sucrose, such as what exists in poop, it starts smoking and growing this crazy looking solid black carbon. So the roommate comes home, goes straight into the bathroom for his daily routine, and several minutes later begins screaming like crazy, because the toilet is now smoking and is overflowing with what looks like his own mutant shit. It destroyed the toilet. Which had to be replaced and paid for by the roommate. My teacher let his roommate think that something was terribly wrong with him for about a month before admitting he was the one who pranked him. And that's the story of how my chem teacher got his roommate to move out. I read this in a post about pranks once. The guy said to get white paint and shrimp, and to mash the shrimp until the shrimp is not too visible. Then you paint the victim's room and after a while, the most rank, low tide smell will pervade the deepest crevice of your mind for the rest of your life. When your victim cleans their cat's litter box. Everyone has a cat, right, sneak into their house at the end of every day and steal the cat's daily deposit. Do this for about a month causing them to think their cat may be constipated. Finally, take a dump in the litter box. Eat lots of fiber and Taco Bell. When I was a younger gay, I became embroiled in a drag queen turf war. A lot of people died that year. One queen in particular had had it out for me, and every Thursday night she would end her set by walking onto my table, and then kicking over my drink. Every Thursday. That is until the night I unscrewed the tabletop and that bitch damn near broke her neck. Like I said, people died that year. Friend of mine, brilliant, kind of twisted, guy, he had this idea for ruining someone's life. He called it the roach bomb and it was more or less what the title suggests. You start with a shoebox, duct tape, couple common cockroaches from around your house, and a big ass spoonful of peanut butter. You put the roaches, 4 to 5 would probably be ideal, in the box with the peanut butter and wrap it tight with duct tape, you don't want them escaping. Find a nice, warm, secure spot for the box, it'll be living there a while. Every week or so, pick up the box and give it a shake, you should theoretically feel more and more roaches in the box as time passes due to them feeding and reproducing. Ultimately, you want this thing to mature until there is hardly any free space left, but a half full box will still get the point across. When it's ready, take off the tape and put it in some nice wrapping paper, mail it to the poor bastard who is about to have his life ruined. Ideally, this guy will be standing when he opens the bomb and, in his shock at discovering the box is brimming with live roaches, he drops it. Boom, they erupt from the box and scatter. This guy's house is fucked. His clothes and furniture are ruined, completely infested, and he is sad. The Roach Bomb This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.